What's up, everyone? Tony here, and welcome back to another video where today I'm going to be showing you how you can create your own virtual assistant, just like Google Now or Amazon Alexa, on the Raspberry Pi using some open source software called Jasper, a little bit of programming and configuration. This should be interesting, so let's get started. So I'm going to be splitting this video into basically two. First talking a bit about the hardware that we'll be using and the second part about the software. So a quick overview for the hardware we're going to be using a Raspberry Pi which I'll get into in a minute. And for the software we're going to be using an open source platform called Jasper which as you can see from here lets us control stuff using our speech and response back. Now we're going to be using this to create our own virtual assist and and what is this virtual assistant? Well, just like Google Now, Apple, Siri, Amazon, Alexa, well, what this is going to do is when we're going to be able to say a command, it's going to be able to recognize what we say, process what we mean, and perform an action. So for example, by the end of this, we're going to be able to ask what is the time, and it's going to be able to process that, figure out that we're asking for the time, and read the time back out to us. So that's the quick overview, now let's take a more in-depth look. Alrighty, so first let's take a look at the hardware. So, of course the essentials of this project, we're going to be using a Raspberry Pi. Here I have a Raspberry Pi 2, this is the same one that I used in all my other tutorial videos. We are going to need some way for an audio interface with the Raspberry Pi. So in my case, I'm going to be using this Behringer U-Control UCA200. Uh, same one I used with the FM radio project. This has um, two RC inputs as well as an output. It'll do the trick because the reason we need this is, well, the Raspberry Pi does have an analog audio output. It does not have an audio input. If you're not using this, you can use something like a USB webcam, which has analog audio, like a microphone built in or you can use any other sound card. So if you're going to be using a sound card uh, like I am, you're all going to need some sort of input device and some sort of output device. For my output, I'm going to just be using this amplifier here connected to a speaker, or you can use any computer speakers, anything that accepts an RCA input. And for the input, you can use anything. You can use uh, an external microphone, or you can use even a laptop or a phone with the microphone just directly looping back to the headphone uh, jack. So anything that can give us audio input will work. You are also going to need an internet connection. So for my case, I'm going to be using just this uh, simple ethernet adapter connected to my uh, network switch over there. But anything will, you can use Wi-Fi or you can use a network connection. In fact, uh, the cool part with Jasper, which I'll get into in a minute is they have a whole list of different speech to text and text to speech engines so you there are actually versions which work completely offline which won't require you to have an internet connection i found that those ones usually have worse voice recognition capabilities though so we're not going to be going that route but just know that that is an available option for you finally as with any raspberry pi project you're going to need some sort of a display so I, i'm going to be using this HDMI to VGA adapter to connect one of my secondary computer monitors as well you're going to need a way to power the Raspberry Pi I'm using this uh, USB cable that's connected to a 1.5 amp wall wart and you're also going to need a keyboard and optionally a mouse most of what we're doing will be done from the command line so keyboard will be enough but stuff like configuring Wi-Fi does tend to be easier when you have a mouse and you can use the graphical interface and that should be all for hardware so let's hop on over to the software instead. So on to the software aspect now. So for an operating system for the Raspberry Pi, we're going to be using Raspbian, which is which is the official operating system and it, it's usually the most reliable and it's based off of Debian Linux, which means it works in a similar way to Ubuntu or Linux Mint or any of the other Debian based uh, Linux systems, operating systems. So you can get either of these 
models. I, I chose to get the Raspbian and Jesse Lite version, which is a minimal image. You can download it as a torrent or as a zip file. Next, I'm not going to go through this, but you simply burn Raspbian onto a micro SD card. It is a .img file. You use something like Win32 Disk Imager if you're on Windows, or Linux has a built-in tool for burning uh, image files to USB devices. So you can use a simple USB to SD card adapter, burnt it, and plug it into the Raspberry Pi. So I'll assume that you've done that for the rest of this tutorial. So once you have Raspbian burned onto an SD card and you're on your Raspberry Pi, time to get configuring. So before we turn on the Raspberry Pi, I'd like to go through the different options you have for using Jasper. Now, since it's an open source uh, engine, basically, there are, you have many different choices. So first of all, you have your choice for a speech to text conversion. So speech to text is what allows you to speak into a microphone and have it convert what you're saying into a text phrase that it can that a Jasper can understand. So your options here are Pocket Sphinx, which I've actually used. Now Pocket Sphinx is cool because it's a fully offline version. It does not need an active internet connection. And as far as I know, it is also open source. Now, the problem is it's actually it's usually not as accurate as some of the other options on this list, and installing it is on the harder side. Google Speech to Text is another option. It is the one Google uses for Google Now as well as Google Assistant. And it, it's much its voice recognition is usually a lot better. It's also a bit harder, trickier side to uh, set up and it requires you to sign in using your Gmail address. ATT speech and speech to text is by AT&T. It performs decoding online. Of course, the, uh, Google and AT&T is both required on op on uh, an internet connection. Wit.ai is uh, also cloud source. In fact, Wit does have a, some other stuff that you can do with it that works in a similar way to Jasper and they have their own API and I've also experimented with it a bit for you. It's useful for creating an internet of things, basically environment for smart homes and such where similar to Jasper, you can have multiple devices do the recognition and send it in and stuff. So we're going to by the way be using a uh, wit.ai speech to text. I found that it's one of the easier ones to set up and the uh, accuracy is pretty good. Plus the fact you can also train it to get even more accurate. And you also have Julius. Um, Next up, you have the option for a text-to-speech. Now, text-to-speech is what takes the result that Jasper gives you and converts it to a speech phrase that it can be played over the speaker. So, your multiple options are eSpeak, which is an open-source speech synthesizer. It sounds just like it says. It is offline, so you don't you won't need an internet connection. But it does sound very robotic, like those are emergency alert things that are on TVs. Um, you have Festival F Light. SVox, Google, of course, Google's again used by um, Google now as well as Google Assistant. Yvonne, uh, we'll play pronounce that right. Mary TTS and Mac OS TTS. We're going to be using Google's. It doesn't require it to sign in. It, it is an online one, and of course, if you're going to be having this do something like read out your emails, you might want to consider one of the other other options beca because even though Google's is free, it is still on their public cloud. So. When it's reading your email out, it will be somewhere on the internet and you ho hopefully don't want that to happen. So be careful with what you use it for, but when it works, it works great and it, does, it doesn't sound nearly as robotic as the other options. So those are our choices for speech text and text-to-speech. Again, we're using wit.ai for speech-to-text and Google TTS for Google's text-to-speech. Now let's get on to turning on the Raspberry Pi and installing the software. So to SSH into our Raspberry Pi, we first need to know the IP address of said Raspberry Pi. There are two main ways to do this. You can either connect your mouse and keyboard to the Raspberry Pi and type ifconfig, I-F-C-O-N-F-I-G, and it will print out the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. Or if you're on another computer, you can run something like um, Angry IP Scanner on Linux or Advanced IP Scanner on Windows. And just have it scan your uh, net network. And as you can see, one of the first ones to appear already is Raspberry Pi local, which I know already is Raspberry Pi. So once you know the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, you can just say SSH. Um, pi at, because um, you need to type in the username. 
And again, I'm using the SSH built into uh, Linux because I'm on uh, Ubuntu 16.10 machine right now uh, on my desktop. As you can see, very creatively named. Um, so you can, and on Linux platforms, you can just open a command line. Uh, on KDE, you can use console. Ubuntu comes with a terminal. You can use UX term, whatever your favorite console is. You can test pi, pi at uh, the IP address of it. So in our case, 192.168.0.25. Hit enter, and it will ask you that it can't uh, it determine if this is if this is an authentic host or not. Just uh, press yes because we don't have an SSL key or anything, uh, and it will. Uh, ask you for the password and by the way if it says fail to add because uh, I didn't run this as a sudo I didn't run it as admin and the default password for logging in is raspberry um, Linux does hide the password in that way um, and if you're on a Windows computer there is a free program called putty p-u-t-t-y that you can download and install it's free and it, it's basically an SSH client for Windows so it, uh, if you're using putty you enter the IP address and the port the port for SSH is port 22 by default unless you change it you actually don't have to type in it'll uh, remember it by default enter in the IP address hit enter and it'll do the same thing it'll ask you for the username and then the password and then you should be in in this case we're in and it says pi at raspberry pi dollar sign meaning we are logged in as a pseudo terminal pseudo meaning admin so from here we can go ahead and download Jasper. So the first thing you want to do after you're done installing Raspbian and you've SSH'd is run Raspi config, of course as a sudo user. So just say sudo raspi uh, dash config. And so I'll take to the Raspbian configuration option. So here we have options like expand the file system, changing user password, enable the Raspberry Pi camera, or even overclocking the Raspberry Pi, which by the way I don't recommend unless you have a heatsink. So what we want to do is you want to say expand file system. Now I've already done this, but clicking enter will say the root partition has been resized. The file system will be enlarged upon next reboot. Hit OK, hit finish, and reboot your Raspberry Pi. And what this will do is by default when you image Raspbian onto your SD card, it only uses a certain space, like uh, something like 200 megabytes or whatever the installation was. And you need to expand it so it takes up the whole SD card as the ext4 system file system so that the Raspberry Pi has the entire SD card to work with and this ensures that you won't be running out of storage space during uh, midway during your installation and configuration of your new virtual assistant so so make sure that you have enough uh, space available on your card and I would recommend using a 2 gig card or larger by the way I'm using an 8 gig right now so once the Raspberry Pi reboots should be soon we can uh, reuse SSH. Again, password is Raspberry. I would recommend changing it, but I'm giving it the default for the sake of this video. So now you want to install a couple programs that will help you out. Alrighty, so a couple programs that I can recommend to make sure you don't uh, hit any trouble later on. Um, and you can just go sudo apt get. Um, this is a Debian based uh, Linux version, so apt get. Is the default file manager it's actually a GDEP, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, or DPKG is the default uh, package manager. So apt get is to inst install or remove packages the easy way. And if you're off, if you're on Fedora or CentOS, it would be yum, or yes, yum would be the default file manager that you'd be using. So you want to install Git Core, or actually, let's first install Vim. Vim is the is a text editor, similar to uh, Nano that lets you edit files. You can use Nano too. In fact, I'll probably be doing that because it's easier. Uh, Git Core is to download and use Git repositories. Python dash dev. This is Python because Jasper is written in Python as a programming language, and you will we will need a Python runtime. Uh, Python dash pip. Or pip, however you want to say. Python dash pip. And pip lets you easily install Python applications. So in this case, will be that's what we'll be using to install Jasper. Instead of having to go download all the files, which we'll still do, but uh, pip makes it easy to just add and uh, import modules into Python. And a couple ones nice to have are uh, bison, libasound2-dev. 
this is to I said lab it's uh, lib this is for sound devices driver in case it doesn't come uh, lib port audio dash dev and python dash pi audio and this is so that python can run stuff to the region oh oh sorry uh, of course we want to run to the apt dash get because we want to inst uh, install So let it build a defensive tree. Actually, first if I want to cancel this, uh, first you'll want to run sudo apt-get update to update the repositories in case there are later versions so that your Raspberry Pi is aware of the latest versions and you end up and you use the latest repositories. So we'll, uh, it's running sudo apt-get update. We'll let this finish. And most of these are also packages recommended by Jasper, which uh, you can view by going to uh, jasperproject.github.io. And this is under their documentation. If you go into the documentation tab under installation, they actually have these uh, steps as well. If you need a text version to follow along. So it's reading the package lists. Should be almost done now. And okay, so now we can get back to installing these and this time we'll, it'll be sure to get the latest versions. You want to hit uh, Y for yes, you want to install these. And it will take a while depending on the speed of your internet connection and your Raspberry Pi. I will be back when this is done. All right, so three minutes uh, later and I'm back and it is done installing. So next up, you want to hit up Elsa Mixer. And in case you don't have um, the visual interface installed, you can do use sudo uh, vim or nano slash etc slash modprobe.t slash elsa dash base dot And I'll show you that as well. So here, um, you can see that we're currently uh, on the BCM 2835 ELSA card and you want to change this hit F6 to change sound card and hit 1 USB audio codec and change your volume to in my case 100 so that it is uh, audible and I will actually be lowering the sound later on from my speakers instead hit escape to save changes it should be good sudo ELSA Force reload, which restarts the also drivers. Should be good now. Yep. Now you can do a record. Um, oh, wrong one again. A record to to record a sample audio file and a play to play it back. Just going to skip that step. Next up, we you can install Jasper. So what you want to do here is git clone um, again git is what we install clone means you're cloning the repository https i'll have this linked in the description so you will not have to write this out but uh, github.com slash jasper project slash jasper dash client dot git jasp and it'll clone it to a folder so the first is the link and the second is the folder so this is going to clone this repository to a folder called jasper and let it work its magic. Okay, now Jasper does have some Python prerequisites that you will need to install. And wrong window again. Need to fix this. Keep clicking the win the window that OBS is running on instead of the terminal. Um, sudo pip um, pip is what we installed. It's to install Python applications quickly. Install dash dash upgrade setup tools. And hit enter and we'll let this run through. And it will install all the Python files needed. Alright, it is running setup.python and it is done. So next we can do sudo. Oh. <laughs> 
sudo pip install hopefully these keys that i'm pressing are on accident like muting the recording or something um no oh i scrolled the page back um dash r ja uh, jasper slash client slash requirements dot txt And the requirements.txt is just a file that ships uh, with the Python repository and it's basically a list of all the Python applications that Jasper requires in order to run. And instead of going through and installing them one by one, you can just feed pip the list of programs and it will download all of them uh, with a single command. Makes your life easier. Okay, and we will let this install. Alright, so 2 minutes 15 seconds later and it is done. Uh, perfect. So next up, let's write Windows this time. We need to set this file as an executable so that we can run it. So to do this, uh, just run chmod to change our file permissions plus x slash Jasper uh, because that's the folder we clone to slash Jasper dot py, uh, py, which is the Python file. So. Uh, Oh, not slash, uh, when you put a slash it being it assumes it's the in the root directory, which it isn't. So Jasper is now installed. Next up to you set up our speech to text and text to speech library. The bright side about using wit.ai and Google to text to speech is that we don't need to install any more prerequisites or compile any of those programs. You actually need to get a few more dependencies for Google's text to speech engine to work properly. So um, you can just do a sudo apt-get update again. Update all the list of uh, repositories. This does not actually upgrade the programs. Thanks for uh, someone who pointed that out. I accidentally said updates their programs. To update the programs, you need to do sudo apt-get upgrade. So let it update uh, the repository list. All right, so um, now I want to go ahead and use a uh, sudo apt dash get install python dash pymag. And then you want to run sudo pip dash install double dash upgrade gtts. No dash here. Let that install. And I guess you haven't figured out GTTS stands for Google TTS. And it handles the entire API interaction and makes it really easy for you. And it will run. And when it finally installs the Python package, we may proceed. All right, so um, once you're here, you'll actually then want to cd into the Jasper directory, which is great. So we can just, um, so in the root directory, I can say uh, cd Jasper, and you can see all the other applications from the, my previous tools here. Um, ls will give us everything that's in here. We want to go to um, cd into the client directory and running an ls here uh, lists us a bunch of python files. We want to run python, to run a python file obviously, uh, populate dot py which will uh, populate the profile dot ymi file which exists in the profile of Jasper. It will make our life easier. So when you run this, it will ask for your name, email, um, so on so forth. So first name, enter your first name. and the first name is actually what it will um, when you run it it will say your name how many of you have assistance and such so it uses your name to respond to you specifically which is a uh, cool and creepy gmail address you can set this up if you're going to be using it to read your emails i am not 
and so it will not need my password either uh, phone number we will not be uh, needing I uh, see uh, this has got to be a uh, one two three four five four five six uh, seven eight nine zero uh, carrier uh, what carrier uh, no carrier uh, location uh, zip code uh, you'll want to enter the closest city and this also gets the weather from your uh, from I could get to from I'm not, I forget which side it gets it from but so it gets to from the right uh, city uh, yeah and if you're in the US it'll look up your weather based on your zip code time zone you will want to enter so uh, you can go again to the Wikipedia link that it gives you and uh, figure out what your time zone is so you either want to figure out the time zone or you don't actually have to enter one at all but in that case um it'll resp when you ask of what is the time it will get be uh, obviously inaccurate so can just enter the time zone and it'll tell you would you prefer to have notifications sent by email or by text message i will choose email okay next it asks me would you like to choose a specific stt engine please specify which so if we go if we have it list all of them um, Okay, that was bizarre, but uh, we don't actually, um, we'll be entering these into the profile.yml manually because we're actually going to need to generate authentication keys from wit.ai. So let's do that next. And so it basically, so what we did so far, it wrote to the profile. So we don't have to define our name, email, whatever. Um, so we can just get our authentication key and we should be good. So you want to open up a new tab, go to wit.ai. And this is their home page again. There's a lot of stuff that looks awfully similar to uh, to this, but uh, theirs is online and you can have it create intense and stuff, but we're not going to be doing any of that. We're just going to be using it for a simple speech or text application. Um, so, uh, you can choose how you want to do this. I'm just going to be using uh, GitHub to sign in. If you don't have an account, you can create one. It's free for you as long as you're not hitting their API really hard. Alright. So you want to go ahead up here and click the plus sign for new app. Click the new app. So uh, let's say uh, Jasper Tutorial. We'll choose private. You can make it open too, but then all your data and everything you save will be open to the community. I'm not sure if you want that. So uh, app description, I'll say uh, Jasper Tutorial Video. Hit create app. And we want to go on over to settings and copy down your app ID and your secret access token, which you probably which I probably shouldn't be blur which I should be blurring out, but um. and these are what we will use for the API. Alright, so next up you want to open up your uh, profile.yml file so we can put in the wit.ai access token so that it can use the API correctly. So you want to head on over to, and um, I'm just actually, I'll just do this in uh, nano again. So sudo nano, tilde slash gets you the directory of the current user, which in this case is pi um, dot jasper slash profile.yml and as you can see this is the current default stuff that the engine has filled out so thing you want to do you want to come on over here to where it says stt underscore engine get rid of it at this point you can also clear the phone number which you don't need which it asks for in the setup um, And you want to now set this up for wit.ai and again I have to warn you everything you say into the microphone whenever Jasper detects audio in the microphone it will be sending it over the internet to wit.ai which by the way does keep a recording of everything you say so that you can train it later on so that it recognizes your voice better so if you care about your privacy and you want to run this full point. I'm only running this temporarily right now. And if you don't have like a mute switch on your microphone, uh, you'll want to use Pocket Sphinx instead. 
or, I, or I suppose you could also use Julius because both of those are offline programs which do not need access to the internet and which do not transmit anything. Unlike uh, Google, speech to text AT&T's, Wit.ai's, uh, all three of those do send your microphone information over the internet. So uh, take that for what you will. Um, that's all I can say. So what you want to do is you want to here rewrite stt underscore engine and we're changing it from pocket things uh, colon wit ai simple enough so you uh, next you can write wit ai dash stt colon access underscore token which is what it, which is what it will need um, in order to um, work properly so you want to head on over here and the server access token that you have here um, this is what you will want to write down or you can of course copy paste it so uh, write that down into the where it says access token and then it will be able to connect to what.ai once you have it written down uh, click Control X and click Y to save your changes Next, you will need to configure your text-to-speech. So, reopen it up. And underneath this, um, add a line that says uh, TTS underscore engine, colon, the one using. So, in this case, again, we're, uh, we're just going to use Google TTS because it's easy and it doesn't need any authentication whatsoever. Um, again, mainly because it's easy and simple. So, save that and theoretically, we should be done next up you will want to connect a microphone and if you want you could configure other things huh? because by default Jasper does have a whole bunch of commands built in so actually we can take a look at it now so in Jasper if you take a look by default some modules that are included are what's the time which will tell the time How's the weather? What's the weather like tomorrow? What's in the news? Do I have any email? What's on Hacker News? Facebook notifications if you set it up. Uh, birthday if you set up your Gmail. Again for Gmail, Facebook and birthday you will need to have signed into all of those. Jokes and life. And of course uh, they actually develop a uh, Spotify plugin which will uh, which allows you to play, pause, skip, track and choose Spotify players so you can interact with your music control. And of course uh, as this is part one of the series, I will probably make another one where I show you how you can uh, code up a, sec a new module. And a module is what is what does the recognition. So you'll be able to do something along the lines of if Jasper detects these words, then it will do this and it will, like in this case, it will pr print out the message. However you want. Um, so you can have something like uh, turn my light on and it will tell you turning on light and since it's a python nothing stops you from coding up something that makes a raspberry pi communicate to an arduino to shut off a relay and you'll be up next to uh, mark zuckerberg with your new home automation system so uh connect your microphone and we'll be right back all right so it's time to test our final setup before we run this, um, just to make sure if any of you guys run this and you end up getting problems in your profile, make sure you're spacing exactly like this because this is white space sensitive. So make sure there are no empty lines other than the first. So make sure your access token line is indented by um, one or two spaces. And with that, we are now ready to run. So I don't actually even have my uh, microphone connected yet, but uh, this should be good enough for a test application. So uh, here, we, here we go. We have the sound card all connected up. We've got um, Jasper loaded up here in terms of the Python script. And when we run this, we should hear it say, how may I be of assistance first name in three, two, one. How can I be of service, Tony? 
and as you guys can hear it is working successfully and you will get the whole bunch of uh, commands. So let's take a look at this from the command line view. So at the Raspberry Pi shell, if we just run dot slash jasper dot pi, you'll see that the Jasper script will start up. How can I be of service, Tony? And you'll see that it works. Just uh, pipe passing through the Google text to speech engine. So now time to connect our microphone and do some testing. All right, so time to check this out. I've connected a microphone to my soundboard, to the input, to the Raspberry Pi. And we shall now see if this works or if it is a spectacular failure. We know that it already passed the first test. Let's see how good it actually. All right, so. All right, so we're now ready to uh, run Jasper in its entirety. So to do this, I uh, just cd into your Jasper directory and run dot slash Jasper dot pi, and it will then do the introduction greeting. How can I be of service, Tony? And to end it at any time, you just can hit Control C. And by the way, that's the command to exit any command that's currently running in Linux. So I can now uh, grab our uh, microphone. Jasper. Jasper. What is the time? It is 7.43 p.m. right now. And, um, you'll know because uh, when it starts listening, after you say Jasper, it'll do a P, like a two high-pitched double P, indicating that it's now uh, started listening. And when you're done talking, it will detect it and it will do a lower-pitched uh, double beep to indicate that it's now stopped listening. And uh, there is actually a bunch of uh, pre-programmed commands, so I can also ask it. Jasper, what is in the news? So I've asked what's in the news. See if it works. Pulling up the news. And at this point, it's uh, connecting to the internet to pull up the latest news. Here are the current top headlines. One. So as you can see, it is uh, successfully working now. Listening to, uh, and it can recognize and understand the commands that we've asked it. So I'll just uh, restart it here. You could also ask it to, uh, st to tell it to stop, and it will stop. Jasper. Tell me a knock-knock joke. Pardon? Jasper. And uh, it actually makes us wait because wit.ai only allows a couple requests to their API at uh, once. Jasper. Still, tr still trying to recognize what I told it a couple of seconds ago. Again, waiting for the API. Jasper. Tell me a knock knock joke. Just uh, to, to tell it knock knock. Knock knock. Who's there? Oink oink. Oink oink who? Make up your mind. Are you a pig or an owl? Get it. Because an owl goes to but a pig goes oink. Oink. Stop. Okay, so um, as you can see, um, it can... 
you can have some pretty decent interaction for the jokes that actually uh, looks them up off of a website so it does have interaction too and in so that's all for today's episode I'll now go through and show some uh, common troubleshooting steps um, again if you can't get your USB device to work just open up sudo uh, do sudo nano slash etc slash modprobe.d slash elsa dash base dot conf if you get an error along the lines of USB input device not found and here under here go to options SND USB audio index equal and set it to negative 2 same as up here um, and if while well, it's at negative 2 it is not recognized as a default audio interface set it to 0 instead and that will set it to the default but I found it negative 2 uh, usually made it work and I just do sudo elsa force dash reload which will restart the elsa repository and you can then redo elsa mixer hit f6 and make sure your device is recognized if it isn't that's when you'll want to and you'll know if you get the input error if you go to elsa mixer and you hit f6 your usb device won't be listed there so that's when you should go to slash et slash modprobe.t slash elsa dash page dot conf change that setting to negative two see if it works if it doesn't change it to zero see if it works uh, those are the two that I found to work for me. And make sure after you re do sudo as a force reload, you unplug the USB cable for your uh, audio codec and you plug it back in, forcing it to reload. Um, again, I found that if I didn't do that, it sometimes wouldn't work. Other important thing is in the profile.yml file, make sure your spacing is set correctly. So if I pull up a profile.yml, you should make sure that your there are no spaces between lines there are no spaces at the end of each line make sure that you have with.ai colon no space here make sure there are two spaces before access token and then make sure there's no space between the access token and TTS engine line and make sure there's no space at the beginning of the TTS engine line uh, those are a few things that I found would uh, help So thank you for watching this episode of my Raspberry Pi tutorial. If you enjoyed this, uh, please leave a like, feel, subscribe to my channel, and feel free to share this video with some of your friends who are also interested in artificial intelligence or uh, cool tech like this. As well, um, if you're interested in seeing a part 2 where I uh, show you how you can program your own modules for Jasper and make it do your own things and maybe even a special episode of interacting with an Arduino, uh, make sure to leave it down in the comments below and as I will be reading there. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all next time. Peace out.